Hello everyone, in this video, we will discuss the most trending topic, heart attack and cardiac arrest. We will try to understand what is the difference between the heart attack and cardiac arrest. If you see, heart has the four chambers. These are the upper chambers. These upper chambers, we call it as the atrium. And these are the lower chambers. These lower chambers we call it as the ventricles. This is the right atrium. This is the left atrium. This is the right ventricle and this is the left ventricle. From the left ventricle, iota is originate. From the left ventricle, iota is originate. This is the iota. And iota starts supplying the blood all over the body parts. Now, we are saying the person is having the heart attack. That means what happened to his heart. Consider this is the heart. Heart requires the blood. Why heart requires the blood? Yes, if the heart wants to work properly, we need to supply the oxygen. We need to supply the nutrients. But how will you supply the oxygen and nutrients? Yes, you will supply the oxygen and nutrients through the blood only. Now, the heart here contains the coronary artery. This is we call it as the coronary, coronary artery. Through this coronary artery, we are supplying the blood to the heart. We are supplying the blood to the heart. Okay. Now what happened? The fat is deposited here. And the fat is deposited here. When the fat is deposited, the coronary artery becomes narrow. When the coronary artery becomes narrow, the blood supply to the heart, the blood supply to the heart is decreases. The blood supply to the heart is decreases. Obviously, when blood supply to the heart is decreases means the oxygen supply to the heart is decreases, the nutrient supply to the heart also decreases. Okay. Now you can look at this image. The first one, this is the normal coronary artery. When the fat is deposited here, when the fat is deposited here. The coronary artery becomes the narrow. When the coronary artery becomes the narrow, the amount of oxygen supplied to the heart is decreases. Okay? But when this fat, when this fat will break, it forms the blood clot. It forms the blood clot. And when this blood clot is occur, it causes the blockage of coronary artery. It causes the blockage of coronary artery. We all know when the blockage of coronary arteries occur, what happened to the blood supply? Yes, the blood supply to the heart is decreases. The blood supply to the heart is what happened? Decreases. So, when the heart don't get the blood, that means necessary oxygen and nutrients are not supplied. Necessary oxygen and nutrients are not supplied. When the oxygen and nutrients are not supplied, that means heart stop working. Because for heart functioning purpose requires the oxygen and nutrients. We are not able to supply that oxygen and nutrients. When we are saying not supplying the oxygen and nutrients means heart stop working. This we say it as heart attack. This we say it as heart attack. I think very clear, the heart attack is majorly due to coronary artery contraction or blockage of coronary artery. You will get the problem that we call it as the heart attack. Okay. Now, whenever the patient having the heart attack, if you observe his ECG, this is his ECG, electrocardiogram. 
you can observe the abnormalities in the ecg like st elevation you can look at this one like st depression and t point rise and other related problems you can see in the ecg so when you see this abnormalities in the ecg that means that particular patient is heart patient okay now we will try to understand the cardiac arrest we all know heart has the four chambers this is the right atrium left atrium right ventricle and left ventricle in the heart we have the special node that we call it as the sa node you look at here this is the sa node and what is the location of the sa node right this is the right atrium this is the right atrium and this is the walls of the right atrium in the walls of the right atrium we contain is the sa node what is the location of the sa node walls of the right atrium only now what is the function of this sa node this sa node generate electrical impulse this sa node generate electrical impulse so when the electrical impulse are generated in the sa node then atria will get contract atria will get contract this is only we say it as the heartbeat this is only we say it as the heartbeat in the diagram you can observe the another node that is the av node the av node stands for atrio ventricular node atrio ventricular node we call it as the av node what is the location of the av node yes it is located in the inferior inter atrial septum inferior inter atrial septum so av node conduct the impulse between the atrium also ventricle also it conduct the impulse between the atrium and ventricles that's why this is specifically we call it as the atrio ventricular node why atrio ventricular node because it conducts the impulse in the atrium also and it conducts the impulse in the ventricle also that is how our conduction system is working whenever the sa node stimulates the av node the sa node stimulates the av node then stimulate is the ventricles so av node stimulate is the ventricles then the blood conduction is occur when av sa node here we call it as the pace maker we call it as the pace maker if there is a any mal function in the sa node can we get the electrical generations obviously there is a no electrical impulse generation when there is a no electrical impulse generation there is a no contraction of atrium and ventricles when there is a no contraction of the atria and ventricles this is we say it as the cardiac arrest cardiac arrest when we are talking about the cardiac arrest we will talk about the sa node malfunction when we are talking about the heart attack we will talk about the coronary artery spasm or contraction or blockade so coronary artery blockade or contraction that leads to the heart attack and sa node malfunction that leads to the cardiac arrest that is what the difference between the heart attack and cardiac arrest but if you look at the ecg of cardiac arrest patient there is a no electrical impulse generation in the cardiac arrest that's why the ecg is straight line you cannot find anything in the ecg but in the heart attack patient you can find is ecg st elevation t wave rise like that abnormalities we can observe that is how you can differentiate the heart attack 
and cardiac arrest. Now, what is the reasons for this heart attack? One of the major reason is the atherosclerosis. That means the fat deposition only in the arteries. So, let us find the, the reasons for the heart attack. One of the major reason intake of intake of trans fat. So, what is the trans fat? There are the two fats. One is the cis fat. Another one is the trans fat. Whatever the fat we are consuming, that all fat is the cis fat only. Because the cis fat promotes the good cholesterol. Cis fat promotes the good cholesterol like HDL, high density lipoproteins. This is the good cholesterol. It not causes the any inflammation in the arteries. But when I am talking about the trans fat, the trans fat promotes the bad cholesterol. What are the bad cholesterol we have? Right. That is the LDL, low density lipoproteins, VLDL, very low density lipoproteins. And this bad cholesterol causes the inflammation in the arteries. They causes the inflammation in the arteries and results in the heart attack. Okay. So, that is what one of the reason intake of the trans fat. But where you can see this trans fat, obviously, when we reuse the oil again and again, then it converts the cis fat to trans fat. The whatever oil we are using, that is the cis fat only. But when you start using this oil again and again, that will be converted to the trans fat and it promotes the bad cholesterol that can lead to the atherosclerosis and that can lead to the heart attack. That is the, one of the major reason intake of trans fat. The second reason for the heart attack, the more, the more amount of homocysteine. When you can see the more amount of the homocysteine in the body, that can also lead to the heart attack. But what is this homocysteine? Why it causes the heart attack? Homocysteine is the amino acid. Homocysteine is an amino acid. Vitamin B12, vitamin B6 and folate. When these are breakdown, when these are breakdown, it produces the homocysteine. It produces the homocysteine. Vitamin B12, B6 and folate breakdown, it produces the homocysteine. The high homocysteine levels in the blood damages the lining of arteries. Lining of, lining of the arteries. So, when the high amount of the homocysteine damage the lining of arteries, this can increases the risk of risk of blood vessel blockage. Blood vessel blockage. Yes, when the blood vessels are get damaged, then there is a clot inside your blood. Then there is a clot inside your blood vessel. This is the clot that is inside your blood vessel. That is only we call it as the thrombus. And when the thrombus in the blood vessel, that can cause us the heart attack. That can cause us the heart attack. We all know the second reason now. What is the second reason? Yes, that is the more amount of the homocysteine in the body. Vitamin B12, B6 and folate. This breakdown causes the formation of the homocysteine. When the high amount of the homocysteine, it damages the lining of the arteries that can increase the risk of the blood vessel blockade. A clot inside in your blood vessels that is called as the thrombus and the thrombus in the blood vessel leads to the heart attack. This is the second reason for the heart attack. Let us move to the another major reason for the heart attack. 
that is the high levels of hscrp high levels of hscrp what is the hscrp full form yes the full form of the hscrp the hs stands for high sensitive high sensitive the c means c reactive c reactive that is the r and the p stands for protein i sense to c reactive protein so when you find the high levels of the i sense to c reactive protein then what will happen yes this is also causes the inflammation in the arteries when the inflammation in the arteries that leads to the heart attack that leads to the heart attack this is the third reason hscrp even in the recent studies they found that elevated levels of crp associated with three times greater risk of the heart attack this is what the recent finding about the hscrp one of the major reason for the heart attack that's why they said three times greater risk of the heart attack the fourth one high levels of the lipoproteins high levels of the lipoproteins the lipoproteins like ldl low density lipoproteins and vldl very low density lipoproteins this is generally we say it as the bad cholesterol okay so when the high levels of the ldl and vldl that causes the build up the plaque in the arteries that can causes the coronary artery spasm leads to the heart attack okay so these are the major reasons involved in the heart attack that's why if you minimize this all conditions this if you minimize this all condition at least you can try to decrease the cardiac disease so thank you all for your patience listening this lecture thank you so much stimulate is the ventricles then the blood conduction is occur when this av no